Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. Coronavirus. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast. As Josh and I sit here on Monday, February 24th, 2020, we see the U.S. stock market is currently reacting in a very negative way to the continued spread of the coronavirus outside of China. Major U.S. indices are currently down about 3%, and the Dow at one point was actually down over 1,000 points today. So that is definitely impacting what we are thinking about, what we're reading about, what we're seeing today. So Josh, coronavirus, what is it? Yeah, so I had to do a little research on that because I myself was not too familiar. I mean, I saw the news and the headlines and thought that was a new name, the coronavirus. But it turns out there are actually very common coronaviruses that go around, kind of what we refer to as the common cold. A lot of those fall in that category where uh, you have the symptoms of a common cold. In fact, when I looked on the, the CDC's website, they said that most people will experience a coronavirus throughout their lifetime or multiple ones. So I was like freaking out. What's going on? Well, this new one is actually um, titled COVID-19. COVID-19. COVID-19, which stands for the CO is the corona, and then the VI is virus, and the D is disease. COVID-19. It follows their protocol for naming. And then 19, guess why? That must be there my 19 different ones? Nope. Showed up in 2019. Oh, oh yeah. so it's this is like naming a hurricane, uh, yeah. But I mean, so, different. But the reason for that is there's a lot of coronaviruses out there. In fact, SARS and MERS, M E R S, were both coronaviruses hmm. that originated from animals and then transferred to human spreading, which is what they believe this C O V I D nineteen. Which, by the way, in the future, we're just going to refer to coronavirus. Throughout this episode, right. we're referencing this current one that's correct, happening right now. Correct. So the coronavirus now, they believe, came from bats, which is exactly the same as SARS and the MERS came from as well. It's known that these coronaviruses, there's some that only impact humans, some that only impact animals, and some that cross over. And they think this is a new one that's crossed over from animals to humans. So that was from the consumption of the animals or from the... Well, they're not sure exactly. Because I heard um, a rumor. Yeah. Then I don't know. I cannot put any validity because there was. it's probably been all around the internet. But I heard a rumor that it was because of some eating of bats. Yeah. I'm so, unsure of the validity of that. Yeah. So the CDC just says that the original cases happened with contact from a large seafood and live animal market in Wuhan, China. So they're not really stating whether it's contact, whether it was from handling, gotcha. eating, who knows what. But it appears to be very contagious and it has moved from originally the contact was limited to people who had gone to that market. Right. But now it has spread. Now it's person to person spreading. And so this coronavirus, which again, the symptoms are similar to what you consider the flu or a cold. You know, you have a fever, cough, shortness of breath, you know, there's sickness involved there. Um, now they're seeing, I just read in an article today that upset stomach like can be stomach part of it. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a lot of things, but then as a result of that, you can have more complications. And that's what a lot of people are dying from is yeah. especially that, that coughing a shortness of breath can lead to other issues like pneumonia or things like that. Especially if your, your immune system is compromised, it can really uh, cause problems. That's what I was just thinking. It's probably most impactful for the, the old, the very old or the very young or those with compromised immune systems like yep. you had, like you said, yeah, that is, that's a big risk. That's kind of scary, but I guess for most people, it'd probably feel a lot like the flu. Yeah, and that's part of the problem is we're in flu season right now. Right. And so a lot of people will come in with symptoms. And so take countries right now that don't have a lot of exposure from the coronavirus. Someone will come in and say, you know, I have excellent symptoms. I have these problems. And they'll say, oh, you have the flu. And they'll diagnose them with the flu right. because that's it matches. Unless they actually do the testing, they won't know what virus they have, whether it's a coronavirus or just a influenza yeah. And that's a problem. So speaking of testing, there was actually just something on the news today. So you know how you see all the videos going around of the Chinese officials or whatever are going around with thermometers and testing people's foreheads. They were actually saying that the Chinese government who's, you know, running all of this, are they're using like an industrial hand thermometer for this is, this, is the state issued one. And they can be off 
by like seven degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's a lot. And if you are banking on 98.6 being your bogey, and you have seven that's plus a lot of room. That's like, a lot of room. That's not a real great. So yeah. that one of the guys on the news was like, "This we've got to find a better way to," because they're they're probably letting people go who have it and bringing people in who don't have it, and then they're going to be in a hospital full of people who have it, and they're going to get it. Yeah. And one of the things we found through this time frame, I mean, it's been going on since the end of last year. The symptoms actually show up after you're contagious like 10 days yeah something like that. so you know up to two weeks right around there that you could be contagious without actually knowing you're sick and so that's the problem is more often than not a lot of viruses you show signs before you're contagious a lot of times they say if you don't have a fever you're not contagious you know you hear that a lot about the right. flu or or things like that well in this case this coronavirus you could be spreading the disease before you even realize you have it, right. which is what makes containment so hard. Yeah. Is it's not so much that China struggled with containment, it's that people are leaving, showing no signs, and then after they show the signs, they've already had contact with multiple people yep. and they've spread it inadvertently. Wow. So Josh, kind of where's the spread gone for this? Uh, where did it start? And like, what's the fit? How is fatality looked at for the for the specific disease? So right now we are. Looking, we're February 2020 and February 24th, Monday. We're going to use the stats that we have right now. So it's changing daily. Uh, but there are you know over 2,200 cases outside of China. That's up from 500 just, just over a week ago. Wow. So it's and spreading so, quickly outside yeah. of China. Part of that is reporting. So again, Correct. you know, symptoms and stuff. So, and I read an article too about the testing. Not a lot of countries have the ability to test for this yet because it's a new disease. Right. They need the kits and all that. So... That's part of why there's a jump. The other part is viruses grow exponentially because the more contact, the more people there are. There are over 79,000 cases in at least 29 countries. Wow. So there's there's a lot there, um, a lot of people, you know, and again, a lot of those cases are in China. That's, yeah. you know, where the, a lot are, but there's a lot outside. Uh, South Korea has the most cases outside of China. They have 833 as of today, Monday. Really close to China. Yes, so. and that is up from only 30 a week ago. So it's again, big, big jump. jump. Right. And again, they, there could be monitoring people, then they finally show the test results or the symptoms, and then they classify them. And then outside of Asia, Italy, which is was just in the news over the weekend, they have over 220 cases, and they have actually six deaths in that's, Italy. That's crazy. There's actually multiple towns quarantined yep. in northern Closed Italy off. specifically, and in going in and leaving is very, very restricted. And I think that... You know, I'm obviously really into fashion. Yes, as, of a, as an invested dad, is that uh, big in Italy? Crocs and socks, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so Milan, fashion central of the world, is, it's fashion week apparently. So like all oh, of the man. big shows are happening this week, and there's pictures of people going to these things in like masks and yeah. stuff because it's are crazy. they like bedazzled masks? <laughs> they're, they're like got like peacock feathers on them or something. <laughs> And then the one other big case that's been in the news is the cruise ship. So right. the Diamond Princess cruise ship has 691 cases out of, um, I think there's like 3,000 people on the ship or something like that. This was docked off of Tokyo, off yes, the coast in Tokyo. Right. And so I think the original intention was to try to quarantine and protect the people. But what they ended up doing was creating kind of a big incubation yeah, for exactly. this disease and exactly. caused the, um, a lot more people to show symptoms because yeah. they did not follow up proper quarantine procedures and they didn't realize how person-to-person contagious this virus was. And so that was part of the issue is that it spread quite a bit among those people on that ship. Yeah, for sure. So I guess next we should probably talk about the impact to whether that be the economy or or the government or whatever that would be. So let's look at it in two different ways. Number one, the U.S. We're, we're in the U.S. here. Currently, 14 confirmed cases in the U.S., 12 were travel-related, two person-to-person related. And then also, there were 39 repatriated people, which 36 of them were from that cruise ship, and three from Wuhan. So that is a lot of people, a lot of cases, but comparatively speaking relatively small yep, for compared now. Yep. To, yeah, for now compared to some of the other areas of the world. Now, economically speaking, this is this going to have some impact on GDP growth in the first quarter specifically. Maybe it could trickle out a little further, who knows. Experts really think it could trim about 0.1% off of GDP in the first quarter and that it's really likely that this first quarter GDP number is going to come in at or below around a 1% growth rate for the US specifically. 
Now, some of those numbers came from an NPR article that we will link in the show notes. Now, let's take a step back and look at things globally. China specifically, according to a BBC article, the government in China has actually asked banks to offer more credit to this economy because it's really been stunned by this virus spreading rapidly and businesses have had to shut down and change a lot of the way that they are doing things. But honestly, I mean, a survey of small and medium Chinese firms found that millions of them really on the, are on the verge of the collapse, really unable to really consider moving forward very far with the things going the way they are. And actually, uh, about 60% of them said that they could only cover regular payments for one or two months before they run out of cash. So definitely having an impact on them. Only 10% of those smaller, medium-sized companies said that they could hold out six months or longer with this really continued at the sustained level that it is. And in China, they're they're not anticipating this recovering until late 2020. Exactly. At the earliest. So it's anticipated to be going on for a while. So a lot of these smaller Chinese companies are really at a pretty good size risk. And Chinese GDP, obviously, is going to be very much impacted, much more so than the U.S. So we're only talking about trimming a, less than a tenth off of our quarterly GDP growth or whatever year over year. But Chinese GDP, their growth for the first quarter is estimated by most experts, according to Reuters, to about cut in half. So 6% is kind of if six percent for you for the U.S. would be unheard of, but six percent in China is where they've been running, and that's even slower where the, than where they've been over the last thirty years. But six percent is where they were last quarter. First quarter is estimated to come down to about three percent growth year over year, and that is half. That is substantial for China, and a lot of experts are actually saying that there could be complete contraction. Like GDP could go below zero for the quarter if the exports are down as much as many fear. So with the U.S. seeing some impact but limited and China seeing substantial impact, the top two economies in the world are going to have impact, and that is going to definitely really slow down the economic growth of the world for specifically the first quarter, but probably you'll see trickling effects throughout 2020 for all of this. So big impacts overall. These are things that tend to and historically have work themselves out over time and there have been cures and treatments and all of these things but we're definitely seeing an impact in the first quarter of 2020 and that is going to continue for the foreseeable future josh this is pretty heavy right yes it's it's, i don't really like talking about this it kind of makes me feel icky yeah it's not fun we we thought it would be you know especially what's going on the market today very insightful for timely listeners pretty something that we wanted to learn a little more about but it is it's not fun to talk about especially when you look at these deaths i mean these are real people real families impacted and you know we're talking about you know over seventy thousand cases of people experiencing the sickness we don't want to make light of the situation or the fact that over two thousand people have died but josh i want to make you smile during this episode Okay. All right. So I got something for you. I have the dad joke of the week. We're going to have a not so somber dad joke of the week in a light of a somber. Yes. We need it. We need need a light. Yep. Why? Why? Why didn't the skeleton go to the dance? I do not know why the skeleton did not go to the dance. Because it had no body to go with. No body to go with. (laughs) I like it. So, Josh, now that you've laughed, should you be worried? About the coronavirus. You know, as of now, fatality rates outside of Wuhan area are still relatively low, about 1%. And even in the center of the outbreak, which is Wuhan, fatality rates for this disease hovers right around 2 just above 2%. So from a standpoint of contracting the disease to passing away, 2%. You know, that's, it's not a high compared to other diseases. Well, and I think even when you compare it to something like the flu... Yes. which has almost a 2% fatality rate, I think, by itself. And there was an interesting video. And we'll yes. throw a YouTube link in the in the um, show notes below. But there was an interesting video talking about like deaths per day on some of these things, and flu was way more yep. than coronavirus. Yep. And then you go back to like Ebola, which has a very high mortality rate, but not quite as spread a, right. as an epidemic. You know, you look at that and got to put in perspective. It's a very new disease. It's scary because... It is spreading quick, and it's not something that we were prepared for. But with a 2% fatality, keep that in mind. You know, For the average healthy person, there's a risk, but not quite as big of a risk. Right. And of course, we're not health professionals in any way. But at least here in the U.S., it looks like you know, washing your hands, covering your mouth when you cough, avoiding generally how you would avoid the flu, right? Don't rub your eyes. Don't put your hands in your mouth. The idea is just keeping germs away from yourself. 
it's a good precaution, especially during cold and flu season. Anyways, I, I don't like germs. So, you know, those are kind of the things that, uh, I've been pushing along. I was helping in our church's nursery and I was washing my hands about every 35 to 40 seconds. Oh, there was a, a lot of, a lot know. of runny noses. Every time there. I see my daughter put her hands in her mouth, I'm like, don't do it. I mean, you can't stop them. No. But so we can stop us I'll in general here in the I'll U.S. Get my hands out of my mouth. Yeah, with that limited, and if you kind of look to see where those are at, you know, in general, for most people, you're not. The chances are small you're coming in contact with this disease. But if you're taking the normal precautions, and if you ever are worried about that, do seek a health professional oh, yeah. and, and see. You can get tested and say, okay, just to put my mind at ease, what am I experiencing? And I'm sure the CDC is gonna. Let if things really change in the U.S. and we start seeing very very fast spreads of things, they're going to let us know and and you know bring some public yes. health you know attention to yeah. this. And what about treatments? Do you know of anything out there? Yeah, there. Uh, so kind of yes and no. So companies like Johnson and Johnson and Gilead are among a handful of companies that are involved in creating treatments and vaccines. Now, a lot of these treatments and vaccines are at various levels of testing. So that's kind of the issue. So, like, obviously this started at the end of 2019, and we're still at the very beginning of 2020. Usually treatments and medicines for this stuff take years. Yeah, take a long time. And, and all kinds of approvals and testing and all that to happen. But because this is spreading so fast, a lot of this is being kind of fast-tracked, and which is good. And there has been – so Gilead specifically is one company that actually has had – some good testing come out of this. And I'm actually looking at an article from February 10th, 2020 from um, Bloomberg Business Week. And the article is titled, We're Not Ready for This. So it's talking about Gilead specifically. It says, since the outbreak of SARS and the often fatal Ebola virus, U.S. federal money for developing drugs and vaccines for emerging diseases has increased. And drugs that may combat coronaviruses are ready for trials. One is... My my medical language is not very good. Remdesivir, a treatment from Gilead Sciences that failed tests in people with Ebola. The first corona, U.S. coronavirus patient in Washington state received the drug after his condition worsened. He improved the day after he was infused, according to results reported in the New England Journal of Medicine. Gilead says it's shipped enough of the drug to China to treat 500 patients and is working to produce more if the trials starting imminently in China are promising. Gilead says we have an army of people working 24 seven now opening up manufacturing lines and doing whatever we can to get as much available as quickly as possible. So this is a good thing. I'm not saying this is, you know, we'll always say this is not a saying go buy Gilead stock, but that is a publicly traded company that is working with the U S and with China to try and treat this. Now this is not a vaccine they're talking about. This is talking about treating people who already have this. Yes. So it's not um, yeah, not something to prevent you from correct. getting it. It's a vac it's a uh, medicine to help you while you Correct. Um, you have the symptoms. Yes. So but other it. companies are working on vaccines as well for this yep. that depending on how this continues to grow and roll out, could be discussed more in the future. And I think, like I mentioned early on, being related to a lot of other coronaviruses, there's kind of the framework there that they're looking at. Exactly. How does this differ? And then how does it? how is it similar that to the viruses we've already kind of tackled and, and conquered? So yeah, I'm sure there was like a formula, and they were like, this is not quite the same as we've seen before, but let's yeah. just tweak Yeah, part similar of to the flu virus that they're constantly yep. adjusting and adapting. But like you said, this isn't a recommendation on what company to go buy. But within there, there are companies working on yeah. this this cure. And, 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 uh, and the ones that are, so on specifically days like today, February 24th, when the market is down pretty substantially, when you have a company that is working on treatments for the thing that's driving the market down, it's typically done very well. So Gilead today is up. Three four percent on a very 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 down day. Yeah. So interesting. Not saying go buy Gilead. Always work with your advisor. But that is a company that's working on something pretty beneficial for the world. I think. Yeah. So that's great. So I guess taking a step back, how will this impact your portfolio? I believe in the short term, there's going to continue to be a lot of volatility. There's going to be a lot of choppiness. And any company that either has a supply chain with China exposure or direct revenue exposure to China specifically, it's going to be greatly impacted. That whole economy is pretty much shut down. Uh, you know, retail, people aren't buying stuff. Uh, food, people aren't buying stuff. I think of like Starbucks and stuff like that. 
people they're, they're not they're shutting and things down they can't find even in the stores i mean hand sanitation all that stuff is gone yeah uh, you can't buy you know like clorox wipes yep. that's all gone it's been even the face up. masks like yep. they were saying that like the prices of those things just shot up yep. which is incredible which i mean it makes a lot of sense it's supply and demand yep. but yes so the short term is going to be greatly impacted this is unfortunately spreading beyond china as well so other asian markets in europe our next level of being impacted by this. And the U.S., though, thus far, has been pretty sheltered from that side of things. Not that our stock market hasn't, because our stock market has definitely seen its fair share of volatility, but the overall economy is, is being impacted a little less than the others. In the long term, however, I, we believe that with modern technologies in medicine and our smartest people from the U.S. and around the world were all working on this, that we are going to be able to treat and prevent this virus going forward, just like other things that we've been able to overcome as a as people over mm-hmm. time. So this is not a good thing at all, but it is a good thing that it is happening in 2020 when we have this technology at our fingertips, at our disposal, and we can really come together as a world, as a as a globe, and and push forward together to to accomplish this. So I think the economy will continue to grow over time, there's going to be some bumpiness in growth for the first quarter and probably 2020 in general. But overall, should have little long-term lasting impact to your portfolio. And then when we go farther out, bigger picture, not just your portfolio, but your financial plan, this should not impact your financial plan at all because your financial plan is a long-term plan and it has many pieces to it. And the goal is that you and your advisor have come up with a course of action. And something like this hopefully will not disrupt your commitment to that course of action. Now, you may have questions on, am I in the right holdings? And you may need to adapt your underlying investments. But again, from a short-term and a long-term perspective, the plan to get from where I'm at to be financially independent and able to obtain all my goals this is, in a sense, irrelevant to that plan because over the course of the rest of my working career and wherever you're at, even if you're planning on retiring next year, the idea is even in retirement, I still have years to invest before the end of my plan. You know, And so this is small. It should not have an impact. If you are concerned about certain things, obviously talk to your financial advisor. That's what they're there for. But if you think back to the other, like bird flu, swine flu, SARS, all those other ones, they came and went And with, like you said, our technology, we were able to overcome those. And so I think this coronavirus will be the same in that your financial plan is based on your long-term goals. And just like anything else within the market disruptions, this should not impact those goals. And to keep you just kind of on track with your financial goals, obviously continue to work with your financial advisor. But if you're interested, check out a brief list of eight timeless principles of investing on our website. Those are kind of eight overarching investment themes that are meant to keep you on track and meet your long-term goals, even in the face of these very difficult global outbreaks or market volatility or, or all of these things. So check it out. It's free on our website, free for you. Check it out. And also, if you want to help us out and to grow our podcast, uh, the best things you could do is subscribe if you haven't already. If you like to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we always appreciate that. Uh, we check out all the reviews, uh, but it also helps us show up better on search results. And if you have any topics you'd love for us to talk about, send them to us at hello at theinvesteddads.com. We love hearing from you guys, and we love to talk about topics that you're interested in. And in case you missed it, check out our last episode where we interviewed Ben Carlson, the author of Don't Fall For It, A Short History of Financial Scams, where we talked about really some things that uh, that investors can look for in some scams that are out there and be able to guard themselves and protect their wealth from. Yeah, so, that was really great talking with you. Yeah, check out that episode. So thanks for being here today. Hope you learned something and uh, we'll keep an eye on this and you guys hopefully uh, will not be too scared. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only. 
and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be